Sarah, it's morning. Sarah, Ruth, it's morning. Shh, let her be. She had such a difficult time getting to sleep. It's a pity to wake her. Pity? I don't pity her or anyone else. I don't have any room for pity. Mr. Yeager, please call extension 208. Mr. Yeager, please call extension 208. She just looks so innocent and full of peace. The only time any of us will get any peace is when we're dead. <coughs> and stop that coughing, would you? If the observer hears you, you won't be around here much longer. Remember what happened to Esther? We don't know anything about her, really, except that she isn't here anymore. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Martha. Good morning. Sarah, let me sleep a little while longer. I was having the most wonderful dream. Not another dream. Let her tell it, Martha, please. No, we're past dreams. We're past hope and we're past pity. No, no more dreams. Martha, how can you be so cross on such a beautiful morning? Can't you feel the warm sun on you? All I feel is hunger. Well, maybe if I told you my dream, you wouldn't feel so hungry. No, I don't want to hear any more dreams. I just want to survive. So let's get to work. Sarah and I will start on the bindings, and you get ready to answer the bell. No. Yes, it's your turn. Please, Martha, no, I'm afraid. We agreed to take turns. Today is your turn. Please don't make me go. I'll do the bindings today. I'll work on light. I swear I will. I'll go again today. No, you went yesterday. You can't keep protecting her like this. She'll never learn to do things for herself. Martha, she hasn't been here as long as we have. She just isn't used to... Used to? Used to? Whoever gets used to it. I've been here longer than both of you, and I'm still not used to it. But I want to eat, and I want to survive. And so I answer the bell. I can't stand the way they stare at me. As if I were a... As if you were a what? Good afternoon. Go so ahead, say it. As if you were a what? Activity should be in the building leper. At this time. Leper? Uh, leper? Activity. Is that what you couldn't say? Even if you can't say it, you are. Martha, she is, you are, I am, leper, unclean, outcast. What difference does it make whether we whisper it or shout it? Thank you much for your cooperation. Have a pleasant afternoon. Stop that crying. It may work with Sarah, but it doesn't work with me. I went beyond tears a long time ago, and all I want to do is answer the bell. Please, Sarah, no, I'm afraid. Don't be. Now just make sure your hands are bound tight, and you keep your head down. And don't look around, and don't look at them staring at you. I'm afraid. Ruth, you said you had the most wonderful dream. Tell us your dream. I can't. I don't feel like telling anyone right now. I just feel like running. Looking like you do? Where? Where are you going to run? Home! This is your home now. Your other home is gone. They're all dreams. Home, family, friends. That's all they are now. There's nothing left. Nothing but answering the bell. But suppose it doesn't ring today. You said that yesterday. I know. But suppose today it doesn't ring. She's right. Maybe they've all left. Maybe they got tired of staring at us. We've Look. been through this before. Every day one of you says they might not come. And every day they come. They're out there. They're always out there. I used to worry about that too when I was alone. And then you came. And Esther. And when Esther was gone, you asked. And then Ruth came. And she asked. They're out there. They're always out there. Every day they come. And they ring the bell. And one of us answers. They stare. They jeer. And they throw down three pieces of bread. And we survive for another day. But what if today is different? Don't you understand? As long as there are people on this earth, there will always be lepers. We serve a function for them. What are you talking about? Don't you ever wonder why they only throw down three pieces of bread? 
Why don't they throw it on enough bread for a week? Or even a month, maybe? Well, why don't they? Because they want to look at us. Maybe they don't enjoy it, but they want to. They have to, to look. But that doesn't make sense. Sarah was right when she said you were innocent. So simple, really. You should have figured it out for yourself. Figured out what? It's like the relationship between the wolf pack and the deer herd. The wolves prey on the sick and the old of the herd, and this ensures the survival of the deer. Without the wolves to thin the herd, there wouldn't be enough food and the whole species would die off. The wolves serve a function for the deer. But we're not animals, we're human. <sighs> we're better than that. Do you honestly believe that? After the way they treated us? I'd rather take my chances with a pack of wolves. I don't want to listen to this. You have to. For once, stop living in a dream. I'm young. I have a right to dream. Here? Here all you have is the right to die. That's not true. We can dream. All their steers can't rob us of that, can they? Can they? Ruth, tell us your dream. We want to hear it, don't we, Martha? No, she doesn't. Yes, she does. Tell us your dream. Maybe she's right. Maybe we Mr. don't Tuttle have to call the author. They've taken everything else away from us. That's all we had left. Don't talk like that. I want to hear your dream. Maybe it won't help you. It might help me. Tell me, please. I dreamt I was a little girl again. I was home with my family. My mother and father were there, my brother Aaron, my grandmother. We were in our garden, it was springtime. All the fruit trees were in blossom. The colors were lovely, pinks and reds and whites. Aaron cut a piece of bark away from one tree for me to smell. I held it up to my nose and it smelled so wonderful. The most wonderful aroma I've ever smelled. It smelled like life, new spring life. It was beautiful. I can almost imagine it. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you for sharing it. Life. It smelled like life. Here it smells of death and decay. Don't you smell it? No, I don't. It's because we're all part of it. We're all so used to it, we're not even aware of it anymore. There's nothing left. Please, Sarah, I'm afraid. Don't be. Now make sure your hands are bound tight and you keep your head down. Now go. Just keep thinking of your family and the fruit trees and the smell of life. Go. You were right. About the bell? I told you. Not about the bell. About this place. There really isn't any hope, is there? No, there isn't. So what do we do? We survive. <coughs> and we don't let them know we're sick. I try not to. Especially in front of Ruth. I don't want her to think that I'll be taken away like Esther was. I can't let her see that I'm ill. How do you do it, Martha? How do you stay so strong? I will it. That's how. Maybe that's my kind of hope. The hope of survival. I wish I were as strong as you. It's not strength. It's stubbornness. Where is she? What's taking her so long? Martha, I want you to promise me something. I want you to promise me that you listen to Ruth's stories and dreams. I do. No, I mean, when? If I'm not here, if I end up like Esther, promise me, please. I can't and I won't. What happens to you or to Esther or to anyone else is nothing I have any control over. So don't ask me to make any promises. What about the stories? Stories and dreams? So what? Eliminate one kind of leprosy and another would crop up. There's always been leprosy and there always will be. Doesn't matter what you call it. The idea of it, that's important. So don't make me make any promises. Because they're as empty as your stories and Ruth's dreams. Ruth, what took you so long? What happened? We were worried. Four. What? Four. They gave us four pieces of bread. What does that mean, four? There must be some sort of mistake. 
Do you think so? Yes. But Martha said they never make mistakes. No. They never made a mistake, not until today. Tell her, Martha, please. No! Never. They never make mistakes. Ruth, there's something I have to tell you. Martha, no. What is it? What's going on? Tell me! Ruth, the day you came, they gave us four pieces of bread that day, too. You came and they took Esther away. I don't believe you. You're lying. It's the truth. But Esther was ill. You said so yourself. No one here is ill. Martha, answer me. Ruth, no. No one's ill here. You needn't be frightened. We're all together here. We're your family. There are no outcasts. They won't separate us. It was a mistake. Martha's lying. Tell her, Sarah. Are you afraid to tell her that the bell rang twice that day, too? We'll have to answer the bell. Ruth? No. I already once, once today. You go. I can't. Martha, are you frightened? I've never seen you frightened before. What's wrong? What's happening? Change. Change is happening. We have to answer the bell. Let's all go. Remember, there are no outcasts here. Martha. Pull out! Leather, Leather. Unclean. unclean. Get back. Get back, all of you. Please stay away from me. How dare you? Put your head down. Do you want to get me in trouble? No, I, I hate this place. That probably comes as no surprise to you. But do you want to hear a real surprise? I don't hate you. I mean, I pity you and all that, but I don't hate you. I guess I just have no luck. Community service. I wanted to make the world a better place to live in. By helping people. Old people, maybe, or children. I never thought I'd get a job like this. I mean, to watch you. It's not so bad when the people come. That part's at least interesting. But watching you all day is boring. I could have had a job in a hospital. But I thought hospital work would be boring. Hospital work would have been ten times better than this. Why am I bothering you with my problems? I'm sure you've got a few of your own. Oh, you better get it prepared as quickly as possible. What's going to happen to us? You know the rules. Asking questions is not allowed. Anyway, I don't know and I don't really care. Just get it prepared. I'm sure you'll be very happy here. Me. Don't be afraid. Sarah, stay away from her. Stay away. She's not one of us. It's some sort of a trick. It's not a trick. She's all alone and she's frightened and she needs us. The way you were when you first came here. What about me? Don't I need your help? Your encouragement? She'll be all right. She doesn't need us. It's some sort of trap, I tell you. It's not a trap. A test, maybe, but it's not a trap. Martha, tell her to stay away from her. Why should I do that? Why didn't you want her to talk to her? I don't know. There's something wrong. Something I don't understand. Call out. Call out! <laughs> Why is that so funny? There's no need to call out to you. You're one of us now. No, I'm not. She touched her. So? The observer, she touched her. How come she touched her and she never touches us? I don't know. Martha. I told you I don't know. Yes. Yes, you do. Martha, tell me. So innocent. What? I said you were so innocent. If you want to know, ask her. Why her? What's your name? Ellen. That's a pretty name, Ellen. I knew a girl in high school once named Ellen. She was tall and had long blonde hair that she always wore in braids, and she had braces, and she talked with lisp. But you think she wouldn't talk very much because of that lisp, but that didn't stop her. She was always so popular, always the life of the party. I always wanted to be such good friends with her. I would have had to stand in line. Besides, her father was a doctor, and my mom. Well, Ellen's a pretty name. Stay away from me, you lepers. Please, there's been some mistake. I don't belong here. I'm clean. See, I'm clean. I'm clean. Don't be afraid. We're your friends. Sarah, stay away from her. Martha, make her stay away. 
let her. But Martha, she's... She's a what? Go ahead, say it. It's what you've been thinking all along, isn't it? She's an outsider. You're beginning to understand. Please help me. I want to go home. This is your home. We're your family now. No, you're not. You're outcast. Everyone knows that. I don't belong here. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? There's nothing much to tell, really. What about your family? It's pretty much like any other family. There's my mother and father and my brother and sister. They're twins. They're seven and I'm 16. I go to high school. Are you a good student? Well, I could be if I wasn't out so much. I Always miss... sick? No. Yes. Yes, I'm out sick. I'm always sick. Nothing serious, I hope. I mean, you didn't see a doctor, did you? I'm not that sick. It's sick enough to stay out of school. What does that have to do with anything? You don't get put here for being sick or missing school. I guess not. Do you have any hobbies? Sports, Mr. Special, please call the no main sports. office. Mr. Special, I'm not very call athletic. I do like reading and writing. All sorts of writing, especially poetry. What about boys? Friends, did you have any boyfriends? What does that have to do with anything? Let's stop this right now. This isn't getting us anywhere, and we need to get Ellen prepared. Ellen, these are the bindings. You're to put them on, and you're to keep them on always. You're never to take them off, except when you're alone, or in the dark when no one else is looking. And the scarf, and, and the rest of the things. Here, I'll show you. No, no, please stay away from me. I don't belong here. I'm not like you. Ellen, please, just let me help you. No, just say no. no. someone else in, or until you get settled in. Now please put on the bindings. No. Yes, and the sooner you do, the better it will be for the both of us. What did she mean by now she understands? Understands what? About you. About how you didn't have any friends. We, she didn't either. Boyfriends. I didn't have any boyfriends. You didn't have any friends at all. There were people I knew. No, I didn't have any friends. But I don't need friends. I get along by myself. I... You what? Nothing. That's why you didn't go to school. I didn't like the way they looked at me, as if I were... As if you were what? Different. So now it's because people are different. What? You are different, aren't you? Odd. Not one of the herd. I kept to myself, but I never hurt anyone. I was just afraid to be around other people, but that doesn't make me... A leper? Of course it does. You're crazy. No, just honest. Don't you see? 
People need lepers. Gives them a sense of security to know that there's someone worse off than they are. Someone to be pitied or even feared. And it's because of this fear we, we feel a need to identify them and isolate them. Not too far away. Close enough so that we can keep our eye on them. You never know what they'll do. So they put us here on the bottom of a trash pile? There is no bottom. This is just one step. It's lower and lower. It doesn't make any sense in this day and age. There were lepers in ancient times, not today. It makes so much sense. People of ancient times had the right solution, the perfect solution. There have always been lepers, called by different names maybe, but lepers just the same. In ancient times, the Romans called them slaves, and then Christians. And in the Middle Ages, they were witches, and Hitler called them Jews. Today, they're dissidents or radicals or just different. It doesn't matter what you call them. They're lepers just the same. So why not do what they did in ancient times? It's so much simpler. It's a simple solution. But there's nothing wrong with me. I'm clean. You said so yourself that you were different. Are they putting people in here for that? I guess that's what it's come to, yes. What's going to happen to those two? Will they be killed? I <laughs> know. They don't do that anymore. Sarah will be taken away to a hospital until she gets well. And then she'll be taken somewhere else. Will the other one be allowed to go with her? Absolutely not. It's important that they stay separated. Why? Because of how they felt towards each other. Like family. They didn't feel like outcasts anymore. Lepers are made to feel like lepers. It's important that they stay separated. But there's nothing wrong with me. You're crazy. I don't believe any of this. You don't believe me, do you? No. Look, see for yourself. I'm a leper because they say I am. I'm just like you. Look, I'm just like you. Please stop. Look, see, I'm the same. I'm the same, but I'm a leper because they say I am. And you are too, because they say you are. They're not here. I am and I say you are. What do we do now? We survive. Put on the bindings, and we survive. Why didn't they take you? Because I make them believe I'm an outcast, and that there isn't any hope. Is there? Is there any hope? Come here and sit down. I want to tell you a story. A story about a dream I had. I was a little girl again, and I was at home with my family. And my mother was there, and my father, and my little brother Aaron. We were in our garden. Yeah. Do you still have those homemade muffins here? Yeah, we have blueberry 
Yeah? What are we doing today? It's June 11th, so it's Haunted House Day. Are there any houses within a few hours of driving distance? Actually, I found a potential haunted house in Aus on Osset Drive in March. It's old and condemned, but no ghosts have appeared yet. Great! I still can't get over your new lifestyle. Right. Seriously, you explore a different paranormal experience every day of the month. Why? That's simple, Christy. The paranormal is so much more interesting than the, than the normal. I hear ya. Oh, shoot. We better be going. I'm making a pasta before we check out that haunted house. You cooking me pasta I'm expected to eat? Now that is frightening.
play, have picnics, and sometimes just talk. So how come we're out here? It's June 14th. What? Every 14th of every month, since I came back from school, I came out here in search of intelligent life from other planets. God knows our supply is limited. Well, it sounds enjoyable and all, but I'm kind of wondering, why did you invite me instead of Christy? Why do you think, Billy? Well, I'm just attempting to find out your motives. But... Christy had to work late, so don't flatter yourself. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So, oh, have you ever seen one at all? <sighs> no. Maybe not this month, maybe not next month, but someday I will. What about you? Well, a couple years ago I saw one. Really? What did it look like? Did you get abducted? Well, it kind of looked like this great big glowing egg, but it, uh, it zoomed away way too quick for me to get a good look at it. Yeah, it did. It really did. Oh. It did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what are you looking at now? It's, uh, it's the moon. It really looks great tonight. The moon, huh? It's not scheduled till next week. Uh, can I see? Yeah, sure. This way. So what do you think, Liberty? It's beautiful. Everything about tonight is breathtakingly beautiful. Cheese ball? Liberty. Yeah, I'd love one. Too irresponsible. 
impossible. She's too unpredictable. Trust me, Billy, you need someone easier to figure out. Mother! But Christy, I, I don't, don't want... Egotistical. Predictable. Practical. Shallow. Rude. Annoying. Boring. I want... I want caring. Exciting. Rebellious. Spontaneous. Wonderful. Lovely. I oh, want you. Hey, Liv. Thought I'd find you here. Oh, hi, Billy. What's the matter? You're a little bit distracted. Nothing. I'm fine. Oh, come on. What's up? Tell me what's going on so I can help you out. I said, I'm fine. <laughs> I have to go to Milwaukee for a job interview today. Oh, a job interview? How much time do we have? Just enough time to teach you a lesson. Excuse me? A lesson to comprehensive tarot card reading. <sighs> Sometimes you're just a little bit too unpredictable. Oh, uh, speaking of my job interview, when are you going to go find a job? I told you I'm so searching. I'm interested in this art school out west. Can't you find a temporary job while you're searching for your... So? Well, you're the one to talk, Miss Little Weird Scientist. I'll tell you. You cannot make up your mind what you want to do. I don't want to hear this stuff. One minute you love me, next minute you think you're trash. Can you take some kind of medication to control those mood swings of yours? That was low. Lower than low. It's over. Oh. Oh. Yeah, well, guess what? I never liked that much anyway. That hurt. See me? Oh, Billy, you got my note. Yeah, I was thrilled. Uh, the directions you gave me were really easy to follow, but uh, how can we meet out here instead of our usual spot? It serves tonight's purpose better. Listen, Liberty, uh, I'd just like to apologize for last night. I said some stupid things, things I had no business saying at Don't all. Don't worry about it. It was all Christie's fault. The things I said was because of my mother. I just hope I didn't hurt you too much. Hey, I'm okay. <laughs> Listen, Liberty, uh, I really do care about you. More than I've ever cared about anyone else before. I know, I feel the same way. Too. Listen, do you want to get out of here? Uh, right. Let's abandon this paranormal death wish and go to a movie. No, Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. I like it here. I don't know what I was thinking, because I, I enjoy these nights under the stars. Let's go back to our usual spot. No, Liberty, I like it here. Took some driving to get to, but, you know, I think it was worth it. You don't understand. Today's werewolf day. This half-man, half-dog creature it has been spotted in this area. It's been known to kill people, so can we please go? Does this mean you're through with this paranormal death stuff? Yes. The real reason I did all this was to look beyond my reality. Search the real purpose in my life. 
I focused what was out there in hopes that I find what I feel in here. I know what I want. Really? My interview went great. The Cancer Institute has agreed to hire me. I'll be doing research with them. To find, a real, to find the cure was the real reason I went to NYU in the first place. So where are you going to be going? That's the best part. I can choose any of the major 13 cities in the U.S. I'll be choosing where I'll be working. I mean, we are. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. We are? I want you to come with me, Billy. Where do you want to go? Well, is there an office in Seattle? Because there's an art school out there that I'm really interested in. Seattle it is. We'll leave on the next flight. Finally, my life seems to be heading in the right direction. Billy, what if I lose sight of my goals? I mean, I'm certain about, I'm certain about the Institute today. But what about tomorrow? Yeah. Hey, we'll both make it. Trust in your intuition. And remember, we're always going to have each other. What was that? It's not important. Let's go see a movie. It's, it's strange, you know. It really is. The way the mind works. I mean, you try to push something away that's best forgotten, that you never want to think about. But instead, it stays fixed in a place like some lesson that's been studied hour upon hour, each word, every detail. It's not easy to talk about. David and the others, well, they're all for hushing it up. And I agree. But it isn't a very pleasant story. Perhaps in the end, you'll feel sorry you were willing to listen to it. Oh, there you are. I didn't hear you come in. Didn't want to disturb genius at work. Genius, looking at the world's biggest idiot. Problems with the book? Well, that's putting it mildly. How was your day? The best. I brought in some fairly large orders. Good man. You should have seen this one customer. A regular Ebenezer Scrooge. I believe it. And there he sat. Right in the middle of everything. On some sort of a platform. Where he can shell bah humbug. <laughs> Just about. And you actually got an order from him? He says to me, Smithers, why do I bother stocking this floor varnish, you pedal? A floor varnish? He was baiting me, you see. But I didn't blink an eyelash. Just give him a very direct look and says, Sir, Num Numo is rapidly becoming one of the world's finest and relishes available for meats. Right all. Guaranteed to tenderize without heartburn. Smithers, I don't know when I've heard such hogwash. But, well, we'll give it a try. Oh, thank you, Mr. Scrooge. No, no, no. Schnudlings for crumb stump fits. Is that a name? It sounds more like a fungus infection. Thank you so much, Mr. Snuddle, uh, uh, thingamabob. I'm sure you won't regret it. David, you're a marvel. Why don't you, why don't me and you team up together? Oh, wouldn't that be royal? I can just see us storming to all the shops. Hello, hello, hello. We're selling num numo. I'll take ten cases. Sold to the grinning wench who wants to sell me into a life of misery. Seriously, David. It's been going a lot better these past few months. Thanks to you. To me? Uh, how do you mean? Well, all that you've shown me. Such as? Improvement on my grammar. References to poetry. Art. Reading. I've learned it all from you. You're exaggerating a little bit, Willie. No, it was my lucky day when Prentice showed, showed me to you. And now this product manager is talking about moving me up. Good for you, it was bound to happen. All he says is I have to keep up the ex uh, enthusiasm. Just keep that in mind and the world is yours. Right now I'll settle for some supper. Here, here. Jenny should be up with it shortly. I just better haul myself in for a quick wash. By all means, we must look our best for Jenny. There's the newspaper if you want to give it a glance. Is the planet Earth still in one piece tonight? What's the last time I checked? With that business at Liverpool, it's got the police completely baffled. What murder at Liverpool? I haven't turned to the page. Another Jack the Ripper? No, nothing like that. 
Why, this doesn't say anything about a murder. Only that a girl has disappeared. But it's the only logical answer. It's gotta be. You can tell Seeger's lying through his teeth. Now, who is Seeger? The murderer. The what? The murderer. What murder? It, it doesn't even say anything about a murder here. Only that a girl has disappeared. But it's the only logical answer. Have the police made any arrests yet? No. Is there any real evidence? No. So right here, she ran away. Now, why would that have? Why would that have to do anything about a murder? Well, where did it say she ran away to? Oh, but there is no real evidence. That must be Jenny. I'll just get the door. She was a phantom of delight when she puts me upon my sight. Good evening, Mr. Smithers. Hello, Lady Sanford. Bearing a sumptuous repast for a humble admirer. Good evening, Mr. Lindley. The vision of you makes a good evening, Miss Hutchinson. Or should I say, Miss Hutchinson for now. Oh, the way the words go bouncing around this room makes a person quite dizzy in the head. Isn't that a shame? The poor dear is dizzy in the head tonight. You've probably been nipping out of their mother's cooking sherry. Again. Oh, you're terrible. I've always considered you a decent chap, Mr. Lindley. And I you, Mr. Smithers. You're really wasting your talents, you know. Oh? You two could go by entertaining. You with your music and art, and you with your... Well, don't you like man's most more noble form of expression? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. You know, Jenny kissed me when we first met. I never did. Well, I still have to decide if I want to give her a chance. Good man they have. Stark raving mad. <laughs> oh, say now, didn't you find that terribly interesting about the murderer buying two bottles of your relish? Not you too, Jenny. Well, he did. Did you hear that? In the paper. Not ours it isn't. Well, he did. It said how the police had been checking into all the activities of that terrible man since he first got into Liverpool. Must be the evening edition. And there it was. Isn't it all too terrible for words? Do you two realize how much trouble has been caused in this world by people jumping to the wrong conclusion? You don't think Seeger did it, do you? I don't know, and neither do the police. He is a suspect. It's only till they find the body. That's true. There you go, you see. There is no corpus delecti, and yet everyone is shouting murder. Won't you sit down? Oh, I can't. My mom will take my head off until I get back to the kitchen. But you must. Well, okay, but only for a minute. Uh, well, what are the facts of the case? Well, to start off with, there's that business. At Liverpool. I uh, no. Um, just f starting with all the, where, when they arrived in Liverpool, and then you can fill in the details. Okay. Okay. They arrived in Liverpool. No, we can skip all that. Um, where, sh where do you want me to start? Uh, when Seeger started making all his trips. Okay. Seeger went into town that day. I think he went in to see the landlord. 
cut down some large trees or something like that. And then he, and then he proceeded to the hardware emporium to pick up an axe. Why the landlord? Think you wanted to cut down the large trees? Large? Why do you want to cut down the large trees? I don't know. That's a very tough, durable wood. You say he got the axe at Hardware Emporium? Yes. That day. He bought it. It cost him an extra $25. I was just being given a detailed account of the situation at Liverpool. Oh, I see. This is the first I've heard about any of it, and, well, is something wrong with Hutchinson? Well, it's just that there's been this problem that's had me half sick all blessed day. Anything we can do? Yes, yes, I think so. Mr. Lindley, you've mentioned knowing several police officials? Yes, I've met with them while doing research on the book. Hmm, do you think you could possibly arrange a private meeting with one of them? Mom, are we in some sort of trouble? Oh no, Jenny, it's nothing like that. Still, I... Won't you sit down? Yes, thank you. You see, I have some in information about that business in Liverpool. Mom! All I know is wherever that poor girl is, I know she's not in Scotland searching off her relatives. You're certain? Quite sure, because you see, well, Jenny and I are the only relatives Nancy's got. We are. You and Jenny? Relatives? Yes. Oh they used to stay in the flat, this flat right here. It's our best, our nicest. But after a while, they moved on. Oh, by the way, the parents stayed here and Jenny slept in your, or Nancy. Nancy slept in your room. I see. Anything else? No. Are you sure you couldn't arrange a meeting for me? I'm... Well... Maybe... Well, we can go down to Scotland Yard in the morning. We can check that out. That's a possibility. Good man. Okay. quickly said our goodbyes. It was like Nancy Elf sat among us, unseen and silent. That was the strangest thing that evening. Have you ever played the game of chess? Why, yes. As a matter of fact, that would describe this case. How do you mean? Well, there's only so many moves possible, but you can only make one. Hmm. Have you ever played the game? I don't really like that game. Well, let's see. There's... Well... No... Well, was anything unusual happening around the place? No. Any unusual odor or anything? Why, no. But there was smoke coming out of the chimney. I see. Was, he, was Seeger seen carrying anything away from the place at any time? No. Hmm. Why do you ask? Well, I'm just trying to sort this out. Uh... Hmm. Did he... Uh... Oh. Were any unusual implements found inside the cottage at any time? 
No. Well, yes. Oh? A large butcher knife and strong file. I see. The knife was... Ma no. Yeah, meticulously cleaned, I do believe the paper said. And no trace of anything? Nothing. Must have been in there when he got there. Or he brought him with him. Hmm. Yep, they were there when he came. Oh. Well... You say he didn't go anywhere? Oh, no, he, w he didn't carry anything out. No, oh. he did not. But he did go somewhere. But where? It says that he went into the town, and that's about it. Didn't say where he went. He went into town that Sunday. I do believe it was the fortnight, too. So, does it say he bought anything? Second, it says on that second trip, wait, another bottle of num num -o. Oh, that's two bottles. Yes. Well, how is it that he... No. What is it? You know, don't you? How did he do it? It's hard for me to talk about, Willie. You have to tell me, though. Where did he put the body? It's the only way. What's the only way? The relish. Relish is only good with meats. Yeah, it says so right on the label. And the only place he bought food was from the green grocer. So he was a vegetarian. Well then how is it he consumed two bottles of num num -o? don't mean it. Yes, I'm afraid I do. We figured out what he did with the body. Of course, by now you do too. But there's one thing. David, why did he cut down the large trees? It must have been for the exertion. In order to keep up his appetite.
opening to all good fairy tales is always the same. They simply start with, once upon a time. There lived a humble carpenter and his son in the little village of Ebenford. And ever since the death of the carpenter's wife, the two were left alone to rely on each other to support themselves. And in that, the bond between father and son grew until it was that the carpenter loved his son more than any father has loved his son since the beginning of time. As the years went on, their lives developed a schedule. Each morning, the boy would wake with the son and go outside to the well to fill a bucket with water so that he could make breakfast for him and his father. This morning routine went on for many years until one day the boy's father, like happens to many fathers when they get too old, died. In order to help keep his father's spirit alive, the boy took on his father's name as part of his own. And when he was old enough, he took over his father's shop. Ever since the end of the great war that was fought by the two neighboring lands, the little village of Ebenford flourished quickly. And as time went on, the boy fell in love with his childhood friend Elizabeth, and the two planned to marry. The news of the boy's happiness was not taken well by Strago, the local blacksmith, who for reasons unknown to all but himself, desired ultimately the death of the boy. And so Strago devised a plan to lure and kill the carpenter's son, William. William Alexander. Hello, William. <laughs> Elizabeth. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I startle you? <laughs> you look beautiful today. Well, I should hope you'd say that. Aren't you even going to kiss my hand? Well, forgive me, my lady. Where are my manners? about tonight. After all, I have the honor of escorting the most beautiful lady in the entire town. I know. Not to mention the most humble. When should I be ready this evening? Be ready by sunset. Aye, right, we'll go then. All right. Until then. You're leaving so soon? Well, you have a lot of work to do, and I have to be ready by sunset. That isn't very much time for the most beautiful lady in the entire town to be ready. But we have hours until sunset. I know. Goodbye, William. Maidens. Today is the day. Today is your last day, William. I've waited a long time for this day. Ever since my father's death, I've waited. And now, my chance has come. After years, my father's soul will finally be laid to rest. Where are those two? Have you seen Matthew? No, where is he? I think he's back over here. I'll go get him. Find him. Just wait here for him. He'd better show up. <laughs> there you are. Hello, man. 
can't you? Get over here! I bang you both a lot of silver for this, so stop fooling around! You both do what I say when I say it. Otherwise, the deal is off. Do we have an understanding? Yes, sir. An understanding, sir. I need both of you here tonight exactly one hour before sunset. If you're not here, I'm going to have to find two other imbeciles. Is that clear? Yes, sir. That's clear, sir. Then good day. Wow, imbeciles. We're imbeciles. Yes, we are. Joseph, what's an imbecile? I have no idea. Good day, my lady. Good day, Strago. And how are you this lovely day? Just fine, thank you. I would assume that someone of your surpassing beauty would be attending the festival dance this evening. Yes. Yes, I'm going with William. I see. Well, perhaps then you'll save but one dance for me tonight. Yes. Yes, of course, but if you would excuse me. However, please, there are things I must attend to. Until tonight, then. Good day, Strago. Good day, my lady. Until tonight, indeed. So now what do we do? I don't know. That is why I am here. Now listen carefully, this much you know. We have to get William and we will do it tonight. This is how. His fiance will be arriving soon. She is the one we need. When William learns that his precious Elizabeth has been taken, you'll have to come and try and save her. And that is where he dies. Yes, what is it? You never said we're going to have to kill anyone. Why, do you suddenly have a problem with your conscience? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We still get paid, right? Yes. Oh, that's so no We can kill somebody. Yeah, wait for her to get into the house and let William know that she's here. Then take her. Yes, sir. Take her, sir. Wait for her out here. Yes, sir. Out here, sir. And don't let William see you two hiding around out here. Is that clear? I hope so, sir. You will abduct Elizabeth without letting William see us, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Fail me not. Yes, sir. You not, sir. Oh, one more thing, sir. Um, how come you want to kill this guy so bad? Because his father is already dead. Oh, well, this ought to be easy enough. Sure will. We just wait here, then? Yep. Okay. Oh, it's him! Hide! Where should I hide? What about me? Whoa! Oh! 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 Huh?
Chicago. Where is Elizabeth? I have her. Where is she? <laughs> Where is she? You should have asked nicely. Please, don't kill me. Cowardice must run in your family. No, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not that generous. You see, I have Elizabeth. And I want you alive long enough to think about that. To think about what's going to happen to you when I finally do kill her. Where is she? She's at my cottage. And if you ever want to see her again, albeit briefly, you'll go there by yourself tonight at midnight. If not, I kill her. Why are you doing this? Didn't Daddy ever tell you a story about the war and my father? About how your father stabbed him in the back and killed him? In the back! In the back! And since I can no longer kill him, I'll settle for his son. Come tonight ready to die. And if you do not come, prepare to be hunted down and killed like the dog you are. <laughs> which is the most important. You lose yourself. You will never forget it. You'll wake up every morning, every day, and know that you are a coward. And without your self-respect, you are nothing. The day I killed Strago's father is the day I died. I lived on in the flesh, but Inside was dead. Father, what happened in the war? What happened to Strago's father? Strago's father was a traitor. He was killing our own men. When I killed him, I thought I did it the only way possible. But his back was turned. It was dishonorable. But I had to stop him. And now you must stop his son. I will face him. You have made the right decision. No matter the outcome. But father, I'm frightened. Fear not. I will help you. But how? You are... I shall fight with you. Yes, but... I will lend you my spirit. Take this. My spirit will guide it. Take my light and go, my son. Go and save your love.
Wait here a moment. Joseph is getting you a chair. Ow! What's the matter, Matthew? Oh, oh, oh. oh man, it hurts. <laughs> oh. Pick up the chair! Now tie her up. These are for you two. They're for you to play with him when he gets here, but just play. Do you understand? Let's hide over here, they'll make it surprising. Yeah, good idea. Come on. But let me tie her back up to eliminate any more of those encouraging outbursts. Uh. Now, William, die.
Elizabeth, are you all right? Did they hurt you? I'm fine now, and that's all that matters. Oh, William, you saved me. Yes, I guess I did. Where did you learn to do that? I didn't even know you could use a sword. It's like my father always said. You'd be amazed at what you could do if you only try. I guess I just needed something worth trying for. Oh, William! What? What's wrong? We missed the dance. The ending to all good fairy tales is always the same. They simply close it. And they all lived happily ever after.